Hi, so Dave Smith here, DJS Photography. I'm continuing my series of black and white workflow videos. Uh, I think we're coming towards the end of what I consider to be very basic uh, ideas. And we'll be heading into shooting with the two cameras, and then uh, wet processing and uh, printing. Uh, but we're just going to wrap up the very basic end and we're going to look at the movements on this uh, 8x10 uh, wilderness camera. And you remember when we looked at the Fuji GX680 that, which also has similar movements, doesn't have the back movements, but I said we'd look at the movements in more detail when we got to this camera. So that's what we're going to do. So I've set it up, it's right here. And what I've done, uh, just kind of talking about movements, is uh, I've set it up to be at infinity focus. The way you do that is to zero the back extension. So the these rails here, right, sit on, let me loosen those so we can see what I'm talking about. So that whole assembly slides. Now if I get this bit of the back in line with this, so the back is zeroed out like so, and I put the front standard, this bit here, so the front of that is at 210. This scale is graduated here, and I'll show that in some close-ups later. Uh, that's graduated, so it's wound all the way back. And the front standard is set to 210. This is a 210 lens. So now the distance between the film plane and the lens plane is 210 millimeters and that sets it at infinity focus. From that point, you, you can't focus on anything by moving this whole lot further back. So then you can focus with the uh, focus adjustment, which is in the center back. I'll show you that in just a moment. But you can see that now winds that out to focus on things that are closer than infinity. Just go and run that back. Turn this around so you can see the focus knob. That's this dial here. So as it's set, all I need to do is to turn that so it focuses, so it moves the lens plane away from the film plane, and from here that's the only way it can go. Doesn't no point in bringing it closer. So I turn that uh, to focus. Okay, so that's that's how I would use focus if things are some distance, say um, five to ten focal lengths away for example. Okay, But I often use this camera in very close-up mode and I will show you focusing for that when we come to shooting. Right now we're just going to look at the movements. So I'm going to run this uh, bed out somewhat. I'm going to run that further out just so that we have the bellows reasonably well extended. Run that forwards a little. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to start with the back movements. So that centre knob at the back is for focusing. All of the knobs on this side have a partner on the far side. Okay, so I'm just going to show you these ones. So let's do the back tilt. There's only base tilt on the back, and that's this control here. So I'll loosen this friend, loosen this one, and tilt that back. I don't know if you can see at this point, but again, there'll be some close ups. There are two markers on here, and when those markers are lined, the back is locked in its zero position. So I'll just let that run back. That's the extent of the back tilt coming backwards and that looks to me to be about 45 degrees. That's quite a lot of tilt. Uh, if anybody's ever used uh, say a shift tilt lens on Nikon or Canon, you'll know that uh, these movements are very, a little bit goes a long way. So that's very generous. Let's try forwards and I think we'll find that we're about there. Okay. It's kind of scrunching the bellows a little bit here which is why I racked it out uh, so we can see the extent. But again, that's around 45 degrees. And if I bring that back and line up those two marks just right there, lock that off, and that back is now again in its zero position. Okay, so uh, the next thing we'll show you 
uh, these two controls. This allows me to uh, bring you back all the way back so I can get a, a, a long bellows extension. I believe the bellows extension on this maxes out at about 760 mils, I think. Uh, you might want to check that on the BH camera website if you're interested in one of these, uh, but it's plenty, uh, it's plenty big enough. Okay, now if I, there are a whole series of detents here. If I just listen for that, just clicks into a detent. Okay, if I take this side, take it out of its detents, you can see I can swing the back by this rather, I think, quite ingenious method actually. Uh, works nicely. You see it on wooden cameras as well. I can swing it in this direction just as easily. And you're getting quite a large amount of swing in both directions. Uh, not quite sure the maximum that you can get. It's probably limited to some degree by the bellows, but I would think it's around 15 degrees, maybe more. Uh, plenty. Remember, a little goes a long way. So I'm just going to zero those out again. And there. And lock that down. So, back controls. Base tilt. Base tilt only, uh, no centre tilt on this back. Some 8x10 cameras will have that, um, but it, you know the expense goes up as you add features. And you get back swing, uh, quite generous back swing by uh, virtue of these detents and the fact that these two rails can move independently of each other. Okay, so that's the back movements. Let's uh, go around to the front. Uh, I think the first one I'm going to show you is, we'll just swing this around uh, a little bit. There we go. Uh, this set of controls at the top. These control uh, rise and fall. So I'm just going to put my finger under here because otherwise that will fall under gravity. There's quite a weight there. All metal construction, remember, and it's got the weight of the lens on. Now you might just see two little dots here. And they line to show the zero position. So we can go right up to there. Right, so that's quite a long, that's quite a lot of rise, maybe three centimeters. And four, much more four, possibly four centimeters in four. And then I can bring those back to uh, center off and just lock that up a bit, lock that to its central position. So rise and fall, again quite generous. Uh, the two controls just underneath control the center axis tilt. So I'll loose these, loose these off, it's going to tilt around this axis here. There it goes. Okay. So backwards, uh, that much. And that looks to me to be something like 20, 22, 23 degrees, something like that. Maybe forwards, probably the same amount. Okay, so a good deal of central axis swing. Just lock that off. And then on the front stand, you also get uh, base axis tilt, and it will go all the way forwards. Why you would want that much? Who knows? But don't forget, if you're using a lot of this kind of manoeuvre, you can also move the back. Okay, it does not, the base axis tilt does not tilt backwards, only forwards. Lock those off. And then this control here, which we met slightly earlier, I've loosened that off and that allows me to swing the front standard left and right and I can get as much movement in that as the bellows will allow. But it also allows for, let me just find the there's a little detent here. I'm just going to find that. There it goes. So that, if I take that out of its detent, that allows for shift, left, and right. Okay. And again, pretty generous uh, shift amounts. So let's just put that back. Let me put that back to my 210 position. There we go. So that's uh, a 
quick overview of the various movements. What I will do with the next video is show those movements in action. We'll show some, we'll set up a shot, we'll show what the movements do on the ground glass, you'll, see, you'll be able to see the effect of each of the movements and how we, how we can put together a shot with uh, one of these cameras. Doesn't seem like much, but the needless to say, the the, op the options are truly endless, and uh, many is the time that I've found myself pretty much tied in knots, and then I just zero everything out, start again, because you have in mind this picture that you want, and you have to manoeuvre this. So we'll to, we'll show those. We'll see the actual image on the ground glass. We'll see how the uh, image can be uh, made up. Okay, so I'm going to put some. Uh, close-ups in so you can see those various markers and I'm also going to show you the various spirit levels that come uh, attached to this camera as well okay so thanks for watching if you want to see more hit the subscribe button bye now okay so as promised I'll just get out of the way of the light as promised this is a little close-up snippet to show the uh, markers that I was talking about. This is the two markers on the back standard. I'm just going to release those so you can see. So that's the back tilted forwards, tilted backwards, and then brought into its upright position. And locked off zero uh, movement there, locked in. Okay, and here you see the two markers to lock off the rise and fall uh, that I mentioned previously. All right, and those are pretty well, uh, pretty well lined up.